Hello and welcome to another Magic Duels gameplay. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green or Simic Flash deck because we have a lot of creatures in it with the Flash ability allowing us to play them at instant speed and to go along with all those instant speed creatures we have some instant speed spells, mostly counter spells so if we don't have anything to counter we can just play one of those instant speed creatures on the opponent's turn so that we still use up our mana. So that's the idea behind the deck. Now let's take a look at the actual cards. Starting out with Rattle Chains, which is a 2 mana 2-1 two flyer with Flash. The other text here is not super relevant. And in the same vein we also have Dimensional Infiltrator, which is also a 2 mana 2-1 two flyer with Flash. Ability not relevant since we don't even have colorless mana to activate it. We also have Harbinger of the Tides, which is double blue for a 2-2 creature, but if we want to play it at instant speed we have to pay an additional 2 generic mana, but when the Harbinger does come into play, then target creature an opponent controls gets returned to its owner's hand, so it's a nice tempo play, bouncing the opponent's creatures. We also have Sylvan Advocate, this one doesn't have flash, but it's just a solid 2 mana creature, comes into play and then when we hit our 6th land drop he gets plus 2 plus 2 and also our land creatures which we do have a couple of so goes well with those. We also have some werewolves and werewolves play pretty nicely with all those instant speed creatures since that allows us to not play anything during our turn which will transform the werewolves and then during the opponent's turn we can still just play out our instant speed creatures or our uh, counter spells, so we get the full benefit of the werewolves transforming, which gives us a pretty nice advantage here, making our creatures cheaper, even though that the uh, front side on the Duskwatch Recruiter is pretty awesome as well, giving us some card advantage looking for more creatures. And in a similar vein, we also have Lamphold Pacifist, which we really do want to transform since um, otherwise she can't really attack. But once she does transform, then we get a 4-4 four, four for just 2 mana, which is pretty great. Then we also have Vile Redeemer, which is basically just a 3 mana 3-3 three, three with Flash, since again we don't have the colorless mana in our mana base to use the ability, which isn't super relevant, so it's not a big loss. Then by far the best Flash creature at 3 mana is Bounding Crisis, 3-3 three, three, that when it comes into play we get to tap or untap target creature, so pretty versatile. We also have Void Crafter, which is a 3 mana 2-4 with flash. When it comes into play, target creature we control gains hexproof until end of turn, so it can help protect one of our creatures from spot removal. Then we get to our counter spells, we've got two scatter to the winds, which can be awakened and we've got 3 Broken Concentration. Then our 4 mana spells, we've got World of Rogue. This one doesn't have flash, but plays well with our evasion with the Thopter tokens and can make our big green creatures unblockable with the ability. And then we also have a Pank Guardian, which does have flash, and we can discard a land when we play it to make a 2-2 Wolf token. So can uh, make an additional creature if we're flooding out a bit. Then we have Adverse Conditions to tap down the opposing creatures so that our big green creatures get in for damage. And we also have Anissa's Judgment as our removal spell of choice and we'll also put some plus one plus one counters on our creatures which works very nicely with the Lamp Old Pacifist so that even if it's not transformed it can uh, still attack if we put a plus one plus one counter on her. So that's the deck, then our mana base, we've got 10 islands, 8 forests, then 2 lumbering falls, 2 hinterland harbor, and then 2 woodland stream. So that gives us lots of green and blue mana for all those double green and double blue spells. So that's the deck, and now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which is interesting, we don't have any green mana, but we have mostly blue 2-drops here that we can cast. So I'm actually tempted to keep this one, even though it's a bit weird. 
but we've got three castable spells here and even a fourth one so yeah I'll, I'll keep it do need to hit some land drops so that we can play two two drops on turn four for example but even if we don't hit all our land drops all those two powered flyers are still pretty good all right there we go so So let's pass the turn and play a rattle chains end of turn. Opponent with another tapped land. And we're gonna flash in a two drop. Give itself hexproof. Not that it really matters. Alright, perfect. So we can attack for two and then keep up all our flash creatures and play the one that's best for the current situation. Probably gonna be a Vile Redeemer. Depends if your opponent plays a ground blocker or not. If your opponent tries to kill Rattle Chains we can protect it. Or maybe we just play another two powered flyer, who knows. Alright, Island. And it's gonna be a Citadel Castellan which is a 2-3, so if we play the Vile Redeemer we can attack into it, but I kind of want to keep it to block the Castellan, so I'm tempted to just play another Flyer here, so yeah, let's play the Infiltrator here, and then next turn when the Citadel Castellan attacks we can play the Vile Redeemer to block it, so here we can attack for 4. It is a bit risky if your opponent has a pump spell to uh, give the Castellan plus 2 plus 2 and trample for example. Um, then it would still get renowned which is the thing we want to avoid since with vigilance we can't even bounce it with the harbinger here. So yeah I think we still go with the Val Redeemer plan though and hope it works out. Opponent does go to combat and attacks. We're gonna play the Redeemer and see if it works. Does resolve. Now we go to blocks. Does our opponent have a pump spell? They do not. So far so good. Do they have a sweeper perhaps? Because that would be a problem. Crumpling Vestige is gonna make black mana and they're gonna cast a Kalidas. Alright, so a life-linking creature is not great for us. Can't really attack in with our Vile Redeemer but we do get to bounce Kalitas once it's tapped with the Harbinger, so we can, before it deals damage with lifelink, bounce it back to our opponent's hand, which buys us some time. So I think we just hit for 4 in the air. And we're kind of hoping our opponent does something in their first main phase, so that they can't replay Kalitas on the same turn. But then again, if they kill one of our creatures, then they get a zombie token. So we'll see. Bearer of Silence. So our opponent wants to play it and then make a sacrifice a creature. Hmm, we could counter this. But then we don't get to bounce Kalitas. So I'm actually okay with letting this resolve. We'll sacrifice the Vile Redeemer, which isn't really doing much and then our opponent does get a zombie but we still get to keep attacking with our flying creatures so I think that's a plan to keep beating down with our flyers since the bearer can't block so now if Kalitas attacks we get to bounce it with the harbinger And that buys us some time. So 
So next turn we get to attack for four and maybe counter Kalitas. Hmm, a Lamphold Pacifist is interesting. Although I don't think it's gonna flip soon enough. So I think we just attack for four in the air, opponent goes to six. Then we counter Kalitas. And then we need to attack for two more turns. Drawing an island here would have been great since that gave us access to Rattle Chains plus Broken Concentration. Um, but I think we just attack with our flyers. We could also attack with the Harbinger and trade it with the Zombie. But I think I'm fine with keeping the Harbinger on defense for now. So let's attack for four. And then uh, see for opponent replays Kalitas. If not, then we can still play the Rattle Chains or the Void Crafter. Void Crafter can also just block the zombie, so... Let's see here. Also, they don't have double black anymore since they got double black thanks to the Vestige here. So they might not even be able to recast Kalitas. Alright, looks like our opponents had enough. They play an Eldrazi Displacer, which they could activate if they have another land. So I think I'm okay with countering this one, since it is pretty annoying if your opponent gets to tap our creatures. So let's get rid of it. Opponent attacks for two, since they can't block with it anyways. Drop to 18. And no other land for our opponent. So now I think the play is Lamphold Pacifist and keep up Rattle Chains rather than play one of our three drops here. So let's attack with... might as well attack with the Harbinger. Opponent is kind of forced to block it. Opponent goes to 2, and then play the Pacifists, and keep up Rattle Chains, which at this point is lethal. So even if they replay Kalitas, it doesn't matter, gather the pack is fine. Alright, so it looks like a pretty heavy Eldrazi theme over there. Another attack for two. No need to flash in rattle chains to block. And I think we do play it since we don't really need to play around anything here at this point. And might as well play an additional flyer. Alright, so I think we just go to combat here. And here we would have passed a turn to transform the pacifist and then played another flash creature end of turn, but it wasn't even necessary. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which we can't really keep without green mana. Alright, this one looks acceptable. We've got a turn to advocate or infiltrator, and then turn three keep up counterspell. So probably gonna lead with the advocate here. Alright, stream tapped on turn 1. Up against blue-black, could be a control deck. We'll find out soon. They're just gonna pass, so if they could be holding horribly awry here to counter the advocate, but um, not much we can do about that. They don't appear to have it. They have Infiltrator themselves, alright. So maybe not really a control deck after all. They're gonna get in for two, put us at 18. And then next turn we can keep up our flash creatures plus our broken concentration. Interesting, so our opponent playing multiple colors. We found another land, so let's hit for two. And then ship it back. 
opponent with another flash creature end of turn. So we could cast a broken concentration to counter it here. We could flash in our own creature to block it. I'm tempted to let it resolve. And then see what our opponent does on their turn. Since it is just a two mana play. So do we flash in our creature to block or do we think we can win the race eventually? We were on the draw, so we are a step behind. Hmm. Yeah, let's play an infiltrator and see if we can block. Does give our opponent a window to resolve a 4 mana spell now that we don't have concentration up. And we do get punished here since it's a Skyrider Elf for 4. But Harbinger is gonna make that alright again since we get to bounce it once it attacks. So can't attack with our own Sylvan Advocate, unfortunately. Opponent attacks for 6. Before damage we can play the Harbinger. Bounce the Skyrider Elf. We could have waited until end of turn to get an attack in with our own creatures. And then maybe counter the Elf on the way back down. But I don't really feel like taking 4 damage is wise. Opponent replays the Elf. So a good draw here would be Nissa's Judgment. Instead we find another Rattle Chains. Alright, so next turn this will be a 4-5, so then it will be able to attack into the Elf. For now we'll have to pass. Can play two Rattle Chains and double block the Elf. Which might not be terrible. Can certainly play one, maybe just block the Infiltrator. So that way we still get to keep up Broken Concentration here, in case our opponent plays another Converge card. And if not, play the other Rental Chains end of turn, and here Broken Concentration will counter the Sylvan Advocate. So that our Sylvan Advocate can still get in there, but Whirler Rogue for the opponent means that they have a lots of evasive creatures at this point. And there we go, Nissa's Judgment is exactly what we needed. So we get to put counters here, counters here, and then kill the Skyrider Elf. And attack with both. I'm happy to trade for the Whirler Rogue here. Opponent takes it all. So maybe has an even bigger play on their turn. They also have this Rogue's Passage, which can make one of their creatures unblockable. Rattle Chains is not great against Thopter tokens, since they can just block the Rattle Chains. So we'll take two. Another Rogue's Passage and no play. Interesting. Bounding Crisis is not bad, so we can attack with both. If we're afraid our opponent has their own Bounding Crisis, we can maybe just keep up our own Bounding Crisis and make our opponent make the first move here. So they just jump, that's fine. And I think we just pass, our opponent has a Vile Redeemer. So a Flash Creature. And they can get the Eldrazi Sign here because they have access to Colorless Mana. So they could make the Vile Redeemer unblockable here with Rogue's Passage, but they should wait until they're attacking with it, because now we get to tap it down with Bounding Crisis. Opponent likely attacks with the Thopters, unless they're afraid they might die, which gives us an attack with Rattle Chains next turn. 
and unless their opponent's last card is relevant, they are dead on board even if they block the Sylvan Advocate with the Cyan token here. So let's go to combat and find out. Alright, so it looks like we got there. Super close game, but drawing that Nissa's Judgment was pretty huge. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which doesn't have any 2-drops, which is a bit awkward since it's pretty slow. And don't even have double blue for scatter, so I think we can do better. Alright, this is much better. Have a turn 2 Sylvan Advocate, turn 3 Crisis or Counterspell. And even another Crisis. So let's not give our opponent too much information by playing the harbor here. Just play Forest. Does our opponent have turn 2 Advocate themselves? Doesn't look like it. Alright, let's play Advocate. And now we have lots of 3 mana plays lined up. Either Bounding Crisis or Counter Spells for days. And if your opponent doesn't have a play here, that's pretty huge, since that means our Counter Spells are going to be countering 4 drops and up. And our Sylvan Advocate is going to keep getting in for 2. And if your opponent doesn't have anything relevant, we can just play Bounding Crisis, which is also good. So your opponent with a slow start might get punished. Since From Beyond I think is worth countering. Gives them too many sign tokens. And looks like your opponent's already had enough. Get in for two once again. And again, we have the option of Bounding Crisis or Broken Concentration. And looks like they're stuck on four lands, which is probably why they left. Still could have waited a couple more turns. Doesn't matter. Land number five, so now we have Rattle Chains plus Broken Concentration available. And if we hit another land, Sylvan Advocate will level up. And if our opponent plays a creature, we can deal with it through Nissa's Judgment. Gideon is one of the cards I don't mind countering. Even though we could Nissa's Judgment to token and then kill Gideon, it's probably safer to just counter it. Five, six, seven. So we have seven power in play. We could make that nine with Nessa's Judgment. So still not quite enough to kill our opponent, but pretty close. And land means this is a four, five, so seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we can just put counters on our creatures. Don't need to fight anything and kill our opponent. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, let's take a look at our opener, which we do need to hit some more land drops, but we do have two two drops, so I think we can keep this one. Opponent leads with Cinder Glade. Another dimensional infiltrator. So we're probably playing, let's see, we could play the Recruiter on turn 2 instead of the Infiltrator. Since getting it transformed would help us cast multiple spells in the same turn. But the downside is that if it gets killed by a removal spell, then we basically lose out on 2 damage that we might have gotten with the Infiltrator. Opponent gets Sylvan Ranger with Oath of Nyssa. So their mana is going to be fixed. 
All right, Hinterland Harbor is not bad, so kind of tempted to still play out a Recruiter since we know we'll transform it once we don't play the spell on our turn. So yeah, let's play the Recruiter. Our opponent is probably gonna play the Silver Ranger on their turn. And hopefully they don't have a 1 mana removal spell for the Recruiter. Alright, they got a Swamp, but they're gonna play Rootbound Crag into another Oath of Nyssa. Gotta sacrifice one of them since it's legendary. But they do still get to look at the top 3 cards. Find a Mountain, so we know they have Mountain and Swamp in hand. So that's good to know about. So now we get to play Hinterland Harbor, attack for two, transform the Recruiter, and then play two creatures on the opponent's turn, which is pretty nice. And we also still have our Counterspell up. So pass, Recruiter transforms, opponent could kill it here, but they don't, if they have an instant. So now we have a 3-3. Fiery Impulse doesn't kill it. And for 4 mana they're gonna cast a Cultivator, that's fine. Just ramps them a bit. And here I think playing the Krasis to ambush the Silver Ranger is fine. And then we can untap, I mean, tap the Cultivator. But our opponent has a Grasp of Darkness to kill the Wolf. I meant to still play the Infiltrator in response, but now we don't get to. So that's unfortunate since we could have still cast the Infiltrator with the cost reduction from the Wolf in play. So we're gonna miss out on a bit of damage, but hopefully that's not gonna determine the outcome of this game. So get in for three. And then keep up double infiltrator and broken concentration. So now our opponent has access to a lot of mana. Thanks to the death cap cultivator. So they could cast a six drop, instead it's gonna be an Akum Firebird which I think we let resolve since it's forced to attack. So it can't be left back on defense here. And I think we're winning the race. They just attack with uh, Phoenix. And end of turn, we're just gonna cast two Infiltrators. So at the end of the day, we just missed out on two damage by not casting the Infiltrator last turn. And Pack Guardian is not bad, so we can attack with everyone. Opponent is gonna block since they do have Delirium, so the Cultivator has Death Touch, but that's fine. They still take 4 down to 11. Phoenix is gonna get in for 3. Put us at 14, and then we have the option of casting one of our flash creatures. Read the bones, that's perfectly fine. They're gonna take two damage here in order to draw two cards. So they go down to nine. Do they have another play? Otherwise, we're just gonna flash in a Pack Guardian, I believe. Exquisite Firecraft to kill one of our Infiltrators, and this is uncounterable, so we can't counter it. And then end of turn, play Pack Guardian, which is gonna hit them for four. And we find a land, but it's a tapped one. Even if our land came into play untapped, 
the judgment would not have been enough to win on this turn. Attack for six. Put the opponent at three. And then with a counter spell in hand and another flash creature at the ready, this should be doable. Opponent attacks for three once again, but that's fine. Go to 11. And Obnixilus is basically going to kill one of our creatures, so might as well counter it. Opponent doesn't have enough mana left to cast a sweeper. And now we get to untap. And if our opponent has a Grasp of Darkness, they could kill the Pack Guardian. So might as well activate the Lumbering Falls here, just to make sure. Could cast Nissa's Judgment too. And there they go, casting Grasp of Darkness, but 5 damage here is still going to be enough to close out the game. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which we have to ship back. Uh, this one is still not great, since we have lots of 4 drops and only 2 lands, but we are on the draw, so I'm willing to risk it here. Opponent with Evolving Wilds, find a Scatter to the Winds, which is not really what we're looking for. Opponent gets a Forest, so if we can just draw lands for the next two turns, that would be nice. Green-Black, Sylvan Ranger. is going to get a mountain so it could be up against a junt deck just gonna play out our advocates and needle spires so at least four colors So we missed our third land drop, which is not great. Arlen Cord is going to make a wolf. Alright, a third land is nice. Um, so do we attack Arlen or not with our Sylvan Advocate? If we attack Arlen, our opponent double blocks, we kill the wolf and lose our Advocate. And then maybe we can attack Arlen. So I, I think attacking here is still better than not attacking, since that gets rid of the wolf. Opponent probably gonna plus and then attack us for two with the Sylvan Ranger, at which point we can flash in a blocker and kill it. A Vile Redeemer can ambush the Sylvan Ranger. And then attack Arlen down to one loyalty.
We have Void Grafter to protect the Redeemer, but we're probably gonna need to use Scatter to the Winds here. Hissing Quagmire. Arlen gonna try and kill our Val Redeemer, but I think we'll protect it with our Void Grafter. Opponent could have a sweeper here, instead they cast another explosive vegetation. So they got lots of mana. Hopefully no large Eldrazi. Land is nice, so we can get in for 5. And then keep up Pack Guardians and Counterspell. Opponent at 13, so almost halfway there. They can also start activating creature lands. I like this Needle Spires. And I think we just take 4, even though we could flash in a blocker. Opponent could still have a sweeper main phase 2, so I don't think I want to risk it. And taking 4 is not the end of the world. And end of turn, play Pack Guardian. So now we're attacking back for 9. Still keep up counter spells. Opponent could activate his and Quagmire here, which is fine. Um, we could tap it down with adverse conditions, but I think just trading it is still fine. Probably gonna block the Pack Guardian. So our opponent's gonna take 5, down to 8. And we're just gonna pass it back. So they could activate Shambling Vents to gain some life. Instead, they go for Needle Spires again. Which I think we just take once again. Down to 12. And then end of turn play Pack Guardian. If our opponent wants to activate Shambling Vent to block, we can tap it down with Adverse Condition and win. Unless your opponent has another cheap removal spell. Um, yeah, I think that's the play. Go to combat. Opponent activates Shambling Vance. We cast Adverse Condition. Does our opponent have another removal spell? And looks like that did the job. Alright, sweet. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day.